reproductive performance is a key driver to a dairy herd's overall profitability. It is not something to leave to chance, and that's where Alta Genetics comes in. At Alta, it's our mission to create value, build trust, and deliver results for progressive dairies around the world. We do that by delivering a combination of trustworthy genetics and high quality management and reproductive services. We know that the value of a genetic investment will never be realized if you don't first create a pregnancy, which is why this AI training is so fundamentally important. To capitalize on the value of genetics, we must first address the very basics in artificial insemination. We invite you to join us in this training video to learn how to handle semen and AI equipment, the basics of the estrus cycle, estrus detection, insemination technique, and reproductive key performance indicators. Creating a pregnancy requires the right equipment and the knowledge to handle it properly. Taking the time to understand the basics and perform these procedures calmly, carefully, and according to instructions will give you the best chance at creating more pregnancies. Here's the list of equipment you will need for artificial insemination. It's a good idea to check inventories on your supplies on a regular basis, so you always have what you need. Before you begin, you will need to determine which cows to breed, either based on visual heat detection, an accurate timed AI list, or from an alert on an activity system like Alta Cow Watch. Also, determine which semen you will use. Make sure the cow to breed is locked in a headlock or properly restrained. Once that's complete, it's time to implement the following semen handling protocols. Before you start the process, check and make sure you have all the materials available and together in one spot. The last thing you want is to start thawing a unit of semen only to realize you don't have the right equipment close by. It is best to keep your AI kit and supplies close to the semen tank and proceed as follows. First, prepare the thaw unit. Ensure the thaw water is clean and the temperature is between 95 and 98 degrees Fahrenheit. Next, locate the canister that holds the unit of semen you need. Lift it up, but not higher than the frost line of the semen tank. Use tweezers to remove the straw of semen you need from the cane. Place the straw immediately in the thaw bath and set a timer so you ensure that it thaws for a minimum of 45 seconds. Do not thaw more than three straws at a time. While the straw thaws, put the canister back in its proper slot of the semen tank. If, for some reason, it is difficult to locate or remove the straw from the tank, put the canister back into the tank and wait 15 seconds before trying again. Once you remove the straws you need, make sure to replace the plug into the neck of the semen tank and close the cap correctly. Many breeders lose canes or straws of semen at the bottom of the tank because they do not carefully follow proper handling procedures. While thawing the straw, pre-warm the AI gun by placing it inside your gun warmer. If you do not have a gun warmer, you can place the AI gun inside your coveralls or shirt. When the 45 second timer goes off, use the tweezers to remove the straw from the thaw unit and place it into a folded paper towel. Completely dry the straw because water is lethal to sperm cells. Always protect semen straws from exposure to sunlight and from cold shock. Never return a thawed or partially thawed straw back into the tank. Using the straw cutter or scissors, cut the semen straw at the crimped end below the seal. Then place the straw into the AI gun. Add a disposable plastic sheath over the straw and gun, tightly securing it with a twisting motion. This helps prevent the leakage of sperm into the plastic sheath during the artificial insemination process. Advance the plunger to fill any airspace in the straw. Place the AI gun in the gun warmer and head to where your cow is locked. From there, you will follow the instructions from the insemination technique section of this training. The length of the estrus cycle in dairy cattle is anywhere from 18 to 24 days and lasts from one period of estrus, or heat, to the next. Estrus is the 12 to 18 hours of a cow's maximum sexual receptivity, and it concludes with ovulation, or the release of an egg from the ovary. It is during this time when we would see the signs of estrus and inseminate a cow 
for the best chance at creating a pregnancy. If we consider day zero as the day of ovulation, then the following is a breakdown of each stage in the rest of the estrus cycle. Metestrus lasts from day one through day four after ovulation and is the stage when the corpus luteum or CL forms. Diestrus is the longest stage of the estrus cycle, lasting about 12 to 13 days. This phase is controlled by the hormone progesterone, which is produced by the active corpus luteum. Next comes proestrus. This stage lasts for four to five days after the CL regresses, which allows for the final growth of the dominant follicle, the one necessary for the cow's next behavioral estrus and for ovulation. When your goal is to create more pregnancies, accurate and informed estrus detection is the cornerstone to success. There are many methods you can use to know which cows to breed. One includes Ulta Cow Watch, the activity monitor system that monitors eating, rumination, and activity 24 seven that uses that data to alert you to the ideal moment for insemination among other benefits. However, this section of the AI training video will focus more on visual estrus or heat detection, a process that requires skill, experience, and consistency. The cost of a missed heat can range from $3.50 to $5 per cow every day that cow remains open or not pregnant. So how do you know when a cow is in heat? The primary sign you will see when a cow is in heat is that she will stand to be mounted. Often, females and estrus group together and mount each other. Generally, the animal on the bottom is the one in heat, but it is very common that both animals are in heat, facing corrals, lining up nose to tail with alert head and ears, and sniffing each other. The window of time when a cow is in heat is very short. In fact, about 70% of cows come into standing heat without being seen because most cows show signs of estrus overnight. That means it is critical to master a system to help visually detect secondary signs of estrus. Tail painting, or tail chalking, is the most common method to visually detect secondary signs of estrus. Paint, or tail chalk, should be applied from two inches behind the hip bone to the tip of the tail head in a stripe that is wide enough to avoid a false positive reading when assessed. Each cow should receive a stripe of paint or chalk per day. Improper painting or chalking can lead to false positives or missed heats, both of which are costly to the dairy. Using these secondary signs of estrus will help you determine whether or not to inseminate a cow. Seeing tail paint or chalk is rubbed off, ruffled hair on the tail head, a swollen vulva, seeing mucus present on the tail or on the rear flank. The inside of the vulva is red and slippery. If your records indicate she is in a normal estrus cycle. Each secondary sign of estrus is equally important, but not one of them on their own is foolproof. For this reason, if you do not actually see a cow standing to be mounted, but still suspect she may be in heat, it's necessary to investigate further. Do you see at least three secondary signs present? If yes, then breed her with confidence. If no, your first step is to palpate for mucus. Is mucus present? If yes, then breed her with confidence. If no mucus is present, do not breed her at this time. The process of efficient and skilled heat detection can be key to the reproductive performance on a dairy. Other tools can be used to help create more pregnancies. Some of those tools include activity monitors like the Alta Cow Watch or a variety of estrus synchronization programs. These tools can save you time and create a more efficient workflow within your reproductive program. After you follow the steps for preparing a straw of semen, put a shoulder length disposable plastic glove on your non-dominant arm and cover it with lubricant. Take a paper towel and your gun warmer which holds your prepared AI gun to the rear end of the cow that you will breed. Stand sideways behind her, form a cone with your fingers, and gently insert your hand through the rectal opening. Make two or three back and forth movements with your fingers in the rectal opening before inserting your hand to make this process less stressful for the cow. Once your hand is fully in the rectum, open your fingers from the cone position and remove the fecal matter if needed. Do this by cupping your hand and pulling it back toward you without taking your hand out. Be very careful to ensure that no fecal matter goes through the vulva during this process. Avoid excessive motion of your arm, 
which causes air to rush into the rectum, because this results in a ballooning effect that will make it difficult for you to grasp the cow's cervix. Gently slide your hand from the upper part of the rectum to the lower part to find the cervix. Hold the cervix with your thumb on top and place the rest of your fingers on the bottom. Thoroughly wipe the vulva area clean with a paper towel. This helps prevent the interior reproductive tract from being contaminated and possibly infected. Insert the insemination gun through the vulva at a 40 to 45 degree angle until it touches the roof of the vagina. Level the insemination gun to go through the passageway to the cervix. This procedure avoids the possibility of entering the urethra, which is located on the floor of the vagina. While passing the AI gun through the vagina, use your other hand to push the cervix forward. This will stretch the vaginal wall, minimizing the chance of the insemination gun getting caught in a vaginal fold. At this point, you will guide the tip of the AI gun to the cervix opening using your fingers on the hand holding the cervix. Once the tip of the insemination gun is in the cervical canal, maintain slight forward pressure on the rod while manipulating the cervix ahead of the gun. The AI gun should remain still during this process. Only the cervix should be manipulated. While you are passing the insemination gun through the cervix, keep your index finger at the forward end of the cervical canal so that you can feel when the tip of the gun reaches your target site, the uterine body, which is where you will deposit the semen. To do that, lift your finger and slowly push the plunger on the AI gun to deposit the semen. Make sure you are on the target at all times to maximize the amount of equal distribution of semen into the uterine body. If you are short of your target, and deposit semen in the cervix, or if you go too far with the AI gun and deposit semen in the uterine horn, your chances of creating a pregnancy from that insemination are much lower, and you could even cause damage to the uterus. After all the semen from that straw is deposited into the uterine body, withdraw the AI gun and your arm. Release the sheath and the straw from the AI gun. Then, peel your gloved hand over them and dispose of the package in a proper trash container. Because cleanliness is key, be sure to take the following measures. Clean your hands after each insemination. Clean your equipment after each use with a paper towel that's wet with alcohol. Clean your footwear after leaving the AI area. Creating more pregnancies hinges on proper insemination technique. If you practice what you've learned through the sections in this training, you will be on your way to a successful reproduction program. Now that you've learned the proper handling procedures and technique for artificial insemination, it is important that you are able to monitor performance. There are three key performance indicators, or KPIs, we'll discuss here that you can use to help keep track of reproductive performance. Pregnancy rate tells us how efficiently the eligible cows in a herd actually become pregnant. Service rate, also called heat detection rate, tells us how efficiently the eligible cows are being inseminated. And conception rate is one indicator of how well the AI technique is being performed. All three metrics are measured as a percentage. Higher numbers mean better reproductive performance. Before we get into the calculations of these KPIs, we first need to define which cows are eligible to breed. First, to be eligible, cows must have passed the herd's voluntary waiting period, or VWP. The VWP is the number of days in milk that the cow must go before she is bred. The length of time is a management decision that varies from one farm to the next and generally ranges from about 50 to 75 days in milk. Secondly, we logically eliminate cows that are already pregnant. An eligible cow must be open at the beginning of the cycle. And third, we also eliminate any cows flagged as do not breed which means the management decision has been made that that cow should not be bred back to have another calf. So when we take cows that are past the voluntary wait period and we eliminate pregnant and do not breed cows, we are left with our group of cows that are eligible to breed. In this example, the green cows. This definition of eligibility is used to determine pregnancy rate and service rate. Pregnancy rate is the most important reproductive KPI on a dairy. It's what gives the most complete view of a herd's reproductive performance because it is impacted by both service rate and conception rate. The calculation for preg rate is simple and answers the question, during a 21-day period, how many eligible cows become pregnant? Dairies that are very efficient at creating pregnancies in their eligible cows 
have very high preg rates. For comparison, if during a 21-day interval dairy A gets 30% of its eligible cows pregnant and dairy B gets 20% of its eligible cows pregnant, then we can assume dairy A has superior reproductive performance with a higher 30% preg rate. Service rate is the KPI that shows how efficient a dairy is at actually inseminating their eligible cows within a 21-day repro cycle. During a 21-day interval, if dairy A has a 70% service rate, it means they are more efficient getting cows bred than dairy B, that has a 56% service rate. This does not mean that 70% and 56% of the animals become pregnant. That simply is the portion of eligible cows that were inseminated. This is important because a cow cannot become pregnant if she is not inseminated. Because preg rate and service rate are both based on eligible cows and both monitor results within a 21-day cycle, that's why these two metrics are usually presented together on the same table. The third KPI we'll explain is conception rate, which is the percentage of inseminations that result in a confirmed pregnancy. To calculate conception rate, you take the number of cows that are confirmed pregnant divided by the number of inseminations performed in the same time frame. Unlike preg rate and service rate, this is not measured in terms of a 21-day cycle. Many factors influence whether a cow conceives, including lactation number, how many times she's been inseminated, season or month of the year, which technician performed the artificial insemination, whether sexed or conventional semen was used, and the breeding code, which tells whether the animal was serviced because she showed visible signs of estrus or based on the completion of a timed AI program. These factors should not be overlooked as you evaluate conception rate as a KPI. To help us identify if conception rate numbers are different from each other, herd management software programs incorporate a basic statistical analysis to show a 95% confidence interval. That means the software is confident that for 95% of the cases, the actual conception rate number would fall between the range represented. When comparing conception rates, if confidence intervals overlap, there is no statistical difference between the two options being compared. If the numbers do not overlap, that means one conception rate is indeed greater than the other. Understanding these three reproductive KPIs will help you comprehend the results that you can achieve when you follow the steps and techniques taught in this artificial insemination training video.